In this lesson, we're going to talk about how you can really multiply your chord vocabulary using chord formulas. Let's get right to it. Hey there, John here with the Blues Guitar Institute, and this is your Tuesday Blues, where we take cool acoustic blues concepts and we break them down in a small bite-sized chunk. And today, we're going to do exactly that. I'm going to give you a small bit of music theory that really is like a key that unlocks a whole lot of chord knowledge. We're going to be talking about chord formulas and I'll give you a little bit of background information on that and then we're going to put those chord formulas to work with triads and you're going to be surprised at how many different chords you can put together especially when we compound that with inversions. We're going to get to all that in this video so stay tuned. We'll start off by just talking about where this chord formula really comes from. I could give you a formula 135 but What's a one, what's a three, what's a five? Well, you've got to know your major scale in order to know what the one, three, and five, really what all that is about. So just a basic knowledge of intervals will really help you out there. But real quick, if we're gonna play an A, we can play an A major scale. Give each one of those tones a number, each interval a number, and we've got one, or root, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, again okay so what we can do is base a chord off of the pitches coming from this scale okay and that's what we're gonna do with this first example which is a major triad we talked about this a little bit last week and as a matter of fact we put it to use um, as kind of like an anchor point when you're sewing triads can be really handy but back to this major triad we need a root a third and a fifth so root third fifth and in A, we can play this here, leading off from this A note on the fourth string. Our C sharp is the third, and then finally the fifth is an E on the second string. So we've got this. And there's our A major triad. You can move this up, it's B, down, it's G. You can move that, that shape all around because you're really just moving into a different root note, but you're keeping the chord formula behind these notes the same, root, third, fifth. Okay, that's the important takeaway here. But if you wanna keep going, things get really cool because we can just alter this chord formula slightly and we can come up with different chord qualities. So the next logical one to move on to, we've got major, would be minor. Now the chord formula for a minor chord is root, so we've still got that. It's a flat third, so we're gonna to have to do something to this third here, this C sharp, and then it's the fifth. So these two are in a good spot, but we've got to flatten this third, which just means drop it down a half step. All right, so now we've got A minor. We're moving the third. minor chord here. This is an A minor triad. But you can keep going. There are a few more that I want to talk about here. What you can also do, instead of you know going root, flat, third, fifth, we can also change the fifth. We can bring that up a half step, which is called augmenting. So we can augment this fifth by raising it up. So you can kind of move that E up here to an E sharp and you've got the augmented chord now I'm just kind of sneaking my finger there you might want to refinger that like this but the tones are there from major to augmented and you can hear how this augmented sound gives kind of a whole lot of tension right this chord wants to go somewhere but this is the chord formula behind the augmented chord and then the other thing that we can do is diminish the uh, chord. And the chord formula for a diminished chord is a root, a flat third, so kind of like our minor chord so far, but then also a flat fifth. It's a bit of a stretch here. You may want to refinger that. But the chord is root, flat third, flat fifth. Cool chord definitely used a lot in the blues and we've used it a lot right here in the Tuesday Blues examples over the years. So to recap real quick we've got four chord formulas now. We've got our root third fifth for a nice major chord triad, 
our root flat third fifth for a minor chord triad. We've got a root and a third and a sharp fifth, an augmented fifth is what you'll hear that referred to. We're just raising that fifth up one. So root, third, sharp five. And we've got the diminished triad, which is the root, flat third, flat five. Okay, so listen to these. I'll just pluck them and let you really hear the differences if we're moving these notes around. There are two other triads, and I use that term a little loosely. You're going to find, if you dig into this, that there's a little bit of a debate whether these next two can be technically called triads, but they are three-note chord voicings, so we're going to go with it because we can really uh, add these two to your vocabulary right here in this discussion. And what I'm talking about are chord suspension, so we can suspend, add a suspension to a chord. And easiest way to do that, that in this particular chord shape, the root, third, and fifth, is to do what we call a sus. You'll hear sus as the, um, the shorthand uh, abbreviation of this. We'll add a fourth. So we'll do a suspended fourth by taking the formula, and instead of having a third, we're going to have a fourth. So root, or one, four, five which really just means raise that major third up one fret. Major, sus four. Major, sus four. The other thing that we can do is a, another suspended chord, and it's a sus two. So if you're thinking about this, what you're gonna need is a major second in place of the third. So we've got root, major second, so we can drop that down a whole step but we still need that fifth. And we're gonna need to refinger that. And there we go. That is a sus two chord. So we've got major, these really go together nicely. You could come up with a little strumming pattern um, to, to get a whole lot of mileage out of these suspensions. So root uh, third fifth, root fourth fifth, root second fifth. Those have some really cool sounds. probably already think of some famous songs that kind of have that suspension sound happening. There are quite a lot of them out there. But now we really have six different chord formulas. We've got major, root third fifth. We've got minor, root flat third fifth. We've got augmented, root third sharp fifth. We've got diminished, root flat third flat five. And now if we bring these two suspensions in there, we've got the sus four, which is a root, a fourth and a fifth, and a sus two, root, a second and a fifth. All right, so we've now got those, what is that, six different chord qualities right here under your fingertips just by moving around a couple of notes. And I really want to encourage you to spend some time and digest this and then, you know, move this stuff around and make sure that you understand the theory that's really happening here. This is a bit of theory that I wished I would have had from day one on the guitar. You know, learning chords like this is helpful, but I think it confuses some things that are really important. You should definitely do that, by the way. I'm not knocking that. You gotta know your cowboy chords. You gotta know the open position, the strum, sing, song kind of stuff. But when you stack these thirds like this and apply those chord formulas, you can see what's happening harmonically here just by moving some pitches around. It really lets you focus and get to the heart of what's really happening here on the guitar. Now, I told you we would also you know, really grow your chord vocabulary by getting into inversions. So let's do that. We're gonna move this A now into a first inversion here by moving the root to the top note, therefore giving us our third in the bass, the lowest note here. So we've got a third, a fifth, and a root. And we're gonna run through those chord formulas using this. So we've got root, 
third and fifth here, but now what we need is a one flat third five in order to get to a minor chord. So we've got to flatten that third. So that's here. We could refinger this. So there's an A minor right there. A minor triad. All right, now let's come back to major, kind of home bass, and we need to augment, right? So we're going to raise the fifth, which is the E here, on the third string, raise that up. And there's that tense, you know, you know, something's going to happen, kind of augmented sound right here. All right, let's go back home and then let's figure out what the diminished chord looks like. We need a flat third and we need a flat Five. I'm going to refinger this and get my little finger right here on the root. But now I've shifted these two down. Okay? So there's my diminished when I'm coming at this from A. Okay? Always know where that root is. Always know where your third and your fifth are and then how you're altering them. So now the only other two that we've got to work with from our little study here is the suspended. So we're going to raise the third up one, so go back to major, raise the third one to four. So now the, the intervals at play here are one, four, five. And then here's a pretty easy one to play. We're just gonna go back to this, which is our sus two chord, which is a root second and fifth. Then you can keep going, and I wanna challenge you to do that. You can do the same thing by moving up here into the second inversion, which puts the fifth in the bass here. It might be a little bit easier for you to visualize it and play it down here, but it's basically an A major triad, just the second inversion of it. And what we can do is everything that we've already done. Root third, fifth, root flat third, fifth. Nice A minor there, that's where that comes from, right? And then, but the, the pitches are a little bit out of order. I want to stop and just make sure that you know that. We've got five, one, three. That happens to be a flat three, okay? So the pitches are out of order, but the formula still applies, okay? So then we can keep going. Let's say we need an augmented. So where's our fifth? It's here. Let's raise that. So there's an A augmented. Now we need an A diminished, so we're going to lower our fifth, and we're going to lower our third. Keep that root the same. There's our A diminished. Now we've got a sus4. Moving that third up a half step. Then we've got a sus2. So to get the two, we're going to move that third down. All right. Cool sounds. Lot, just moving that third round and moving in and out of those suspended chords. Very cool sound. So I know we went through the inversions rather quickly, but I want you to take some time and really focus on moving those specific notes around. This is, I'm telling you, key to knowing a whole lot about chords and how the fretboard is arranged. It's going to really help you in a lot of areas of your playing, especially if somebody is playing you know, some cowboy chord stuff next to you and you want to play something a little bit different, then you can go to a different spot on the fretboard and pick out some things. You know, you don't have to just double what they're doing. So this is very useful in that context, but in a lot of other contexts. It'll help your lead playing. It'll help your general musicianship. It'll help you understand how chords are put together. And I find that that really helps me, especially as a finger picker who always is doing stuff like this. You know, what am I really doing? It really helps me get inside the music more. So have some fun with this, but really just create a quiet space and time in your living room, wherever you can, and work on this stuff. We're going to put it to use in future lessons here. So I really want you to dig in and work on this stuff and uh, you'll come away with a whole lot more confidence in uh, your chord vocabulary, and you'll also just know a ton of chords and how to play them, right? I haven't done the multiplication here, but t trust me, it's a lot of chords. By the time you factor in all 12 keys, all the sharps, all the flats, all that stuff, and then the two inversions that you can do plus the root position, you got a lot of chords on your hand once you run them through these six chord formulas. 
All right, that's it for this lesson. I hope you dig it. I hope you learned something. And be sure to hit that red subscribe button and come on back here next week where we take these concepts and we really put it into a cool bluesy situation. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. And I think you'll really see the power of these tries that we were talking about. In the meantime, if you're looking for a great place to start with the blues, head over to bluesguitarinstitute.com slash start now and sign up for the free three pack of lessons from the Acoustic Blues Jumpstart. There's a ton of quick wins in there. We talk about 12 bar blues, about turnarounds and about the shuffle rhythm. I think you're really going to dig in. It's a great way to jumpstart your blues. Until next time, be sure to practice smart, play on.